2B2T, notoriously the most toxic, dangerous, and destructive server in Minecraft history. As many people watching may know, this server is home to some of the most famous Minecraft hackers and griefers of all time. These individuals have single-handedly ruined builds that took weeks, months, or sometimes even years to complete. Even though some of these players have caused much chaos, I will not be focusing on them as there was an organization of hackers that produced so much fear and uncertainty that people genuinely wondered if the server would even survive after it. So buckle up, as today I will be talking about the infamous NoCom exploit and its effects on the server almost two years later. It was the summer of 2018 and Nerds Inc, a group of infamous hackers and griefers on 2B2T just lucked out. Now you're probably wondering what I mean by lucked out, but if you know 2B2T then you might have an idea. Because let's be honest, that means you either found a base to grief, found a dupe stash to raid, or found a bug to exploit. With the Nerds Inc, it was the latter, and here's what they found out. 2B2T uses a software called PaperMC to make the server run smoother and more efficiently. For the most part, the software has greatly improved the overall performance of 2B2T and kept bugs to a minimum, but every so often an exploit would be discovered and would eventually have to be fixed. For Nerds Inc, they found a vulnerability that would only work if a pre-existing bug was patched. You see, back in the day, you could load chunks on the server without even having to be in them, and if you loaded enough chunks, you could crash the server. As you can probably guess, the nerds abused this exploit to its fullest extent and made it so bad that the owner of the server, Housemaster, had to contact PaperMC to look for a way to patch the exploit. Soon enough, the bug was patched, but as I said previously, this is exactly what the nerds Inc. wanted, as now they had access to a much better exploit. This was because to patch the bug, Housemaster now made it where for a chunk to load, a player had to be in it, which made it possible for someone to track one's location now. How did it make it possible? I have no clue, but apparently somehow it did. Even with the power to track players, the nerds hadn't learned how to use the exploit's true power, but that would all change because of one man, and his name was Legerve. They may have been called the nerds, but they didn't nearly wield the brain power to automate and refine this exploit. So they churned for help, and help they received. The nerds knew they needed to reach out for someone with a background in programming, and they found just the guy. His name was Legerve, and he was a developer on Impact Hat Client, which is one of the most popular hat clients in the game. This was a wise choice for the nerds, as Legerve turned a primitive and inefficient way of hunting down bases into no joke, a program that was able to track everybody's movement on the server 24-7, 365 days a year. In short, they did this by having three bots always online with one in each dimension, as to track people by receiving server packets of their movement throughout the world. It got to a point where the nerds could actually recreate the chunks that players were in on a private server as to remotely see the terrain and builds that were in it. If this sounds really overpowered, that's because it was, but fortunately for everyone that wasn't either Nerds Inc or Legerve, the carnage would soon come to an end, as in July of 2021, the exploit would finally be patched by Housemaster. The chaos was finally over now. Just kidding. And that was because even though the nerds couldn't track anybody anymore, they still have three years worth of base locations saved to their database. But things were going to get better at some point in the future now, at the very least. The no-com exploit absolutely ravaged 2B2T and made people question their trust in the server. And can you really blame them as over 200 million blocks were stolen and 15,000 bases had been compromised. Plus, in the months following the no-com exploit, base griefs were still very high to the point where even J Schlatt's secret 2B2T base was exposed. But as time passed, the frequency of griefs slowly but surely did go down and now in the present, most major griefs have already taken place. Even though NoCom has little to no influence in today's 2B2T, it will never be forgotten, and legacy-wise, will probably go down as one of the most severe exploits in not just 2B2T history, but Minecraft history as well. So if you were part of Nerds Inc, you got everything you could have ever wanted. Near unlimited blocks, hundreds of griefs, and one of the most legendary stories in 2B2T history. And to be honest, that's probably what this was about. Don't get me wrong, they probably enjoyed the process as well, but the legend and influence they will leave behind is probably why it was worth it to them, and that's because it's human nature to strive for greatness and yearn for leaving a mark on history.
And yes, you could say that the way in which they achieved this legacy was one of darkness and evil, but at the end of the day, they accomplished something that we all want, and that's to be remembered for generations to come.